This demonstration is going to show a Mallard Drake head that will be um, stoned in with texture and not wood burned. I'm at the point where all the detail that will be needed on this head has been added with the exception of the nostril holes. So uh, I use detailed photographs to give me an idea of the feather flow, especially on heads. And what I see with this mallard is, and it's pretty indicative of most of the uh, waterfowl ducks, uh, is you can see the feathers are radiating like this in this jowl and cheek area. And then they follow down to the neckline. This is different than the feathers that are going along the crown which seem to be longer and have a slightly different color of iridescence and they follow this jowl line all the way down to the back of the neck meeting at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is draw some guidance lines on my head to um, give me some uh, idea of which way I should be uh, texturing as I actually texture. By adding these reference lines I don't have to really think about um, keeping my direction and feather flow correct because it's pretty much laid out for me. So what I start doing is they begin here I can hear my loon clock in the background. This just gives me a, a way to guide myself as I'm working on this, keeping me straight with the feather flow. So basically, the feather flow is going to follow these lines. And it looks a little goofy, but you'll understand once you see what I how I'm doing this. You'll see why I'm doing this. Now, this jowl line comes from the back of the eye, follows through the front and side of the neck. So I'll be taking that same line and applying it for this area. It's one side done. I'm going to do the same. I kind of want to take account so that I have things even here. Not that I want these, cir these circular uh, rows to show, and they won't in the end, but it'll also help in being having continuity from one side to the other and counting these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. <coughs> okay, we have 12. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Kind of be aware of what you did on the other side and make sure that you're remaining even. And again, these are just guidance lines. Now, along the under the eye, there's this distinct area where the feather flow is different than these cheek areas. Again, that jowl line.
Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Just want to stay even. I'll look from the back side in comparison just to stay straight. <coughs> it won't matter as much underneath as it does on the side. These feather lines go up. Again, these are just kind of a guideline so that I don't have to really think too hard. This texture as I go. I'm going to add that area underneath this right eye. Look nice and even. Again, have everything working its way towards the center of the back of the head and neck. And with that, I'm pretty much ready to begin texturing. I use the Geshwin Power Hand 3. And I'm using <clears throat> a very small um, 16th inch uh, white abrasive ceramic stone. It's tapered very slightly. It's flat on the end. I can take my uh, dressing stone and give it a nice sharp edge. I'm not hardly pushing. Just giving it a nice sharp edge so that as I texture I'm not losing it can get rounded, so it's not a nice, fine, hard line. I'm going to begin radiating. Sometimes you need to kind of adjust your light so you can actually see what you're doing. More helpful. And as you can see, one of these strokes emulates out to that next line. Don't have to be perfect here. Right now we're just, this is the first pass that I will make in this texturing process. We just want to get everything, these lines going in the right direction at this point.
You can see next to the bill, they're going almost straight up. I hope you can see this. I never know while I'm videotaping this alone if uh, I'm coming up with a good video or not. So I'll do one side and then check my video, and if it isn't very good, I have a second chance to correct whatever I wasn't doing correctly for you guys to see what's going on and how I'm doing this. Just bring these straight around to the underside, and again, I'm not looking for perfection yet. <laughs> Maybe a little more particular on your next steps. And you'll note as you go over grain lines that the texturing stone tends to ride a little higher leave less detail so um, that's one of the things you address in, in uh, subsequent passes of texturing is uh, grain lines that want to stick out you can see that this is radiating and there's kind of a ridge going on here, but we're going to get rid of that in the end, so don't worry about that. I'm going to continue up the face towards the crest as I work into this next. Little feathers. There's not really rows, it's just the way that they emulate from the center here all the way around the face. And actually feathers, you hold a duck by its bill hanging with its tail down. All you see are circles all the way around that bird of the way those feathers are laid out on that body. That head, the neck, everything. I can add a little bit of curve to these as when I come back in my second, third pass of texturing. I just want to get these probably not even in the camera. There we go. Alright, so I'm So far, so good.
you can come back and split out little areas that <clears throat> you left too wide when you come back the next time. So don't fret about being perfect. Now there's sometimes it's easier for me to actually to push in areas that are uh, not reachable or hard to reach or have something in the way like this neck, the bottom of this neck is from my hand when I get here. So I'm just going to show you uh, an optional approach. See right here, I can't really get this as flat as I'd like it to be. I'll try. See that green line I'm going over right here. Come back and take care of that. I don't know if when I rotate it so that I can see a shadow, if there's enough shadow for you to see what I'm doing. I hope. So, coming back and adding little splits and breaking this up once we get the feather flow laid in and once I say we it's me and the mouse in my pocket once I get the feather flow laid in I'm used to having students who are physically with me <laughs> that's the we I guess that I'm referring to. Even though you're not with me, you're watching. You can always ask questions. Now, I can't get under this part right here, so I'm going to go ahead and just notice I'm pushing. I'm not going backwards. I think you'd have a different result um, in doing that. Something less uh, feather-like. These ends are actually ending with my backward strokes. Might take a little practice for you to get to this point. Or if you are ambidextrous, you can switch hands entirely. And I am to a certain extent, but only in a pinch when I really need to do I uh, use my other hand. I'm only able to figure out a way to get at an area coming from behind or above. And that's not accessible in the conventional way I'm holding my hand piece or the head itself. Okay, so I'm looking further. I don't want to be ending this area here. Remember, I showed you how that difference in feathers really comes in, so again, it's another guideline that was penciled in. The feathers are not this long. Well, they are, but they're not, sh that much of them is not showing. Um, again, 
and we'll get refined as we come back as I come back on this next on the next passes. And flipping it upside down, pushing towards the bottom of the feather barbs. Slowly but surely, getting towards the bottom. And just put these long strokes up next time through. And we'll add more splits. And variations in the feathers, because we don't see like the quill in the feather of these um, head feathers. We're seeing long barbs that are attached to a quill that's further down than uh, we can see the depth uh, of the feathers is surprising on any duck. But uh, the end of the barbs that is coming off are coming off of the quill um, are quite long so we don't necessarily see that quill before another feather is covering it up that's on top of it so that's why no quills in the head even though they do exist and then, even then, they're very, very small and very fine. Unless it's some sort of an ornamental feather you don't normally see on waterfowl or other birds. Okay. Now. In an effort to remain uh, balanced, I'm going to shut off my video and I'm going to do the exact same thing to the other side because I think it's important um, to stay uh, even, work evenly from side to side. Next time I come back and sit down, I might not be in the same mood as I am this moment. So, uh, to make sure that uh, this side will look like this side. I stop at this point.